How's it going everybody? Raising Hell here and today I'm going to be looking at a game called Castle Siege. Now this is a little bit different from what I usually do. This is a mobile game and it is available on both Android and iOS. So for those of you who have either tablet, you will be able to play this game. It is basically a deck building like card game focused on uh, like a castle setting. So here we have two different difficulties, hard and normal. We can play against the AI. We can also do like hot seat local play two player co-op. We can adjust our deck and change the different cards in it. So uh, there's definitely a lot of customization there and the game is supported through ads, in-game ads. So if you want to get rid of the ads, you can buy the game. Otherwise it's free to play. There are no microtransactions in it aside from the paying to remove the ads. It is a pretty simple game overall. And there are, let's just start a game here. There are a couple of ways where I think it is sort of let down. So if you're, you look at the both sides of the map, you can see two castles, one's blue, one's red flag. And on the left side and the right side, we have our resources, both mine and that of my opposition. In the top, we have trolls, which means like labor, sort of builders, and below that is the bricks, and laborers produce bricks every turn. Below the bricks are the soldiers, and the soldiers produce the resource below soldiers, swords, every turn. And the same pretty much goes for the magic. You have a wizard, and they produce magic each turn based on the number of wizards there are, and that uh, applies to the other two types of resources as well. So there are three basic resources, bricks, swords, and magic. Then we also have our castle and our wall. And our wall will go down before our castle goes down, depending upon the kind of attack you. So if I use a basic attack here like Archer 4, it will attack my opponent's wall first. And if my opponent's wall is down, then it will start attacking their keep or their stronghold. However, there are some cards that just target the walls exclusively or target the castle exclusively. Uh, so it will depend upon what cards you have to play. Now, the objective of this game is to either destroy the enemy's castle by reducing it to zero or increase your castle to 100 before the enemy does. And you do this by playing various cards like that. Um, I think one of the ways the game is let down most in is that um, there seems to be like a vicious cycle you can get into. If you do not get the right cards at the right parts of the game, you're going to be pretty much guaranteed a loss. So it's very de dependent on just the luck of the draw, draw, more so than a lot of other card games, I think, that people are used to playing uh, on you know, virtual card games. But here's the fundamental problem, is that there are expensive cards and cheap cards and in the beginning of the game you really need cheap cards because if you don't have cheap cards you're going to have cards that you can't pay for so you're going to they're just all going to be uh, grayed out and you're going to have to waste a turn throwing a card away and that just generally wastes time and it gives your an opponent an advantage and the same thing can happen in the late game if you don't have expensive cards you can spend all your resources that you've accumulated on what's going to happen is your opponent has the good cards you don't you're spending you're wasting turns essentially spending these very cheap cards like if i had a handful of wolves here spend spend one sword attack two they're going to be doing far more damage to me than i'm ever going to be doing to them because they just got good cards that they got cards that are relevant to their period that they're fighting in the game the, the amount of time that has elapsed in the game. And I'm not getting those. So uh, it can be quite heavily dependent on luck. And that is one thing that I don't care so much for. Like right here, for example, tap to this card. I can't, I can't afford any of these cards. I've essentially wasted a turn here. And through no necessarily bad planning of my own, it's just that I got dealt bad cards. And what I think would be a good idea is to allow players to rotate through their hand a little bit. Maybe allow them to discard one card a turn of their choice. And I think that would help alleviate this problem, make it a little bit more strategic in terms of deck building, and don't require uh, depend entirely on just the luck of the draw, because that is one thing that's really turned me off to it. But it is a fun little game just to play. Uh, I'd say matches take about 10 minutes. It depends. Uh, but uh, that is pretty much... The gameplay, some simple options. As you can see, the user interface is not the most impressive, obviously. It looks like a basically a simple thrown together game. On iOS, anyway, we do have 
uh, leaderboard and trophies, which is rather interesting. I found I don't know about the Android if the Android version supports that. It might. Uh, we have the rules and the tips. And as I mentioned before, you can build your own deck and you can actually set it up where the AI can play against itself, which I'm not sure if you need to do, but it is a pretty simple game as well as a game that I find like mindlessly diverting. Obviously there isn't a whole lot of strategy. I mean, like I'm just talking here and I'm just randomly picking cards almost. And there doesn't seem to be a lot of strategy involved in winning this game. And I, I could see that being a deficit for somebody who generally really enjoys strategy. I mean, that is what I focus on mostly. Let's see if we can get to 100 here. I, I won there, four minutes and 57 seconds. Uh, that's what a victory looks like. And then there you get an ad. I think after every game you get an ad. So it's not too uh, intrusive at all. I know a lot of games, like they'll put banner ads all over it when you're playing. That's really obnoxious. And then you end up accidentally clicking on them and stuff. Overall, Castle Siege, I think, is very respectable in their approach to advertising. And I like it uh, for what it is. It's definitely limited in its uh, scope and probably its replayability. But it's a fun little app that you can just uh, sit down and mindlessly play something when you don't feel like there's anything else to do so anyway i think that's enough of that rambling nonsense perhaps so i'll just close it out here and uh, thank you as always for watching i do appreciate it you're i don't take your time for granted at all and if you decide to invest it in listening to me talk i i mean that's one of the biggest compliments you could pay me really so yeah, thanks, and I hope to see you next time.